This is one of the biggest machines on the planet. 100,000 tons of steel, cargo, and raw power. So, when it needs to stop in the middle of the ocean, what holds it in place? You're probably thinking, the anchor, obviously. It's huge, it's heavy, it digs into the ground. Simple. Well, what if I told you that's almost completely wrong? On a massive ship, the anchor is basically just a placeholder. The real secret to stopping this beast from drifting isn't the anchor. It's a mind-bending piece of physics hidden in the chain. So, to get a ship to stay put, you need to fight two invisible enemies, wind and current. They are constantly pushing this massive object. And to fight back, you have two key tools. First, the anchor. Its job isn't to be heavy. Its job is to be a hook. Modern anchors, called stockless anchors, are designed to do one thing perfectly. Dig in. When they hit the seabed, their flukes, these shovel-like arms, are shaped to bite into the ground as soon as they're pulled horizontally. But of course, this only works if the seabed cooperates. Solid rock is practically unusable. If you were to apply force to an anchor on top of solid rock, the anchor will just skate right over it. The algae have a similar effect. They create a carpet-like surface where the anchor will simply slide. A sand bed is an improvement. The anchor will dig in much easily, but it will be difficult to find a solid grip. The ideal situation is for us to find a sticky seabed, like clay or mud. The anchor will dig in like a claw. But here's the thing, even with a perfect bite, that anchor is nothing without the real star of the show. It's technically called the road, and on a big ship, we're talking about hundreds of meters of ridiculously heavy, high-durability steel. Every single one of those individual links weighs about 160 kilograms. Yes, that single link is heavier than a grand piano. And while the anchor itself is not lightweight, at roughly 23,000 kilograms, it weighs more than 15 average cars. And yet, its job is surprisingly simple. It's just there to hold the end of the road in position. The real holding power comes from the total weight of the entire chain and anchor combined, which can top a staggering 243,000 kilograms. To put that in perspective, the entire anchor and road weighs as much as a fully grown blue whale. Now, for the real magic. This is where it gets good. You don't just dump the anchor and hope for the best. There's a precise art to it, and it all comes down to a beautiful mathematical concept, the catenary curve. When the anchor hits the bottom, the ship keeps letting out chain, a lot of chain. The goal isn't to make a straight line to the anchor. The goal is to create a long, heavy belly of chain that lies flat on the seabed for a significant distance. This curve is the catenary, and it does two incredible things. First, the sheer weight of hundreds of feet of chain lying on the seabed creates an insane amount of friction. It's like a giant paperweight. But second, and this is the genius part, it acts as a massive perfect shock absorber. When wind or waves push the ship, they aren't pulling directly on the anchor. They're trying to lift this immensely heavy chain off the sea floor. All that energy is spent fighting the weight of the chain. The curve straightens out, absorbing the shock like a giant rubber band. By the time that force actually reaches the anchor, it's been dampened so much it's just a gentle tug. Without that curve, any sudden pull would rip the anchor right out of the ground. The catenary is the secret sauce. It's the difference between being anchored and just having a heavy object tied to your boat. Great, you are locked in place, but now you need to leave. How do you pull up an anchor that is designed not to come out, attached to a chain that weights more than a blue whale? Well, you don't just pull, you drive. The ship uses its main engines to motor slowly forward, right on top of the anchor's location. As the ship moves, the windlass, that large machine on the front, pulls the chain in. The ship's engines do the work of moving the ship, so the windlass only has to lift the vertical weight of the chain, not drag the entire ship sideways. Once the ship is directly over the anchor, the chain is pulling straight up. This vertical force does something clever. It lifts the back of the anchor's shank, using it as a lever to break the flukes free from the seabed's grip. This whole process requires precision. 
A captain needs to know exactly how much chain is in the water. Too little, and you lose the catenary effect. Too much, and you might have trouble retrieving it. So, how do they measure it? They don't. They read it. Anchor chains are built in sections called shackles. Each one is about 90 feet, or, in real measuring dimensions, 27.5 meters long. At each join, the connecting link is painted a bright color, usually red. Then, the links on either side of it are painted white. The number of white links tells you which shackle it is. One white link on each side means it's the first shackle. Two means it's the second. Three means the third. It's a simple, rugged, analog system that lets the crew just look at the chain and know instantly that, say, five shackles are in the water, meaning 450 feet of pure holding power. This is the elegant, deliberate, and physics-driven reality of anchoring a massive ship. It's a slow dance of machinery and natural forces. And then we have Hollywood movies, where a huge battleship can drop the anchor to do an emergency handbrake turn, which is completely inaccurate. So what would really happen? Best case scenario, the chain would absorb a tiny bit of energy, then the anchor would be ripped out of the seabed and just bounce along the bottom like a tin can tied to a car. The ship would barely even notice. Worst case, the anchor somehow gets a perfect hold on solid rock. The chain snaps instantly under the unimaginable force. So the next time you see a colossal ship resting peacefully in a harbor, you'll know it's not just sitting there. It's actively engaged in a delicate balancing act. It's held in place not by a simple weight, but by a graceful curve, a hidden law of physics, and the immense distributed power of the chain.